started, I thought that maybe I'd address the elephant in the room. Let's <laughs> see if see if I can make things work. We told you we was there. Let's go. Again, what? Well, so we applied for a grant from our uh, from the Presbyterian the Trinity Synod. The grant is specific to be used for electronics only. Uh, they're trying to, to do things. You see, here, here comes Ray and Eleanor. They missed the whole thing. <laughs> uh, so at any rate, it's for electronics uh, only. And this is for, I think, most, mostly for preparedness in the future so that we can avoid touching things and, and so forth uh, as we try to avoid somewhat during the pandemic. Uh, so that's why that is here. Our session decided to move ahead with the project and to expand it to include painting, uh, which of course was started uh, and is Sometime, sometime over the coming weeks or months, we'll get, the, we'll get that scaffolding up and get the rest of this done. Uh, but I needed to prepare for this uh, and next week uh, a little bit, so that's on pause. Uh, the, in addition to, uh, to this project, the, the, uh, the session is also uh, uh, hopeful of potentially doing some other building improvements uh, going forward. So, in addition to Sunday morning worship, this screen will enhance our study group and also provide the opportunity to have movie nights, which we can invite family, friends, and outreach to the greater community. So we're hopeful that, uh, that we can uh, experience some growth by able, being able to do some additional programs uh, that have been limited to this point. Uh, for those who came in a little bit late, we had an elephant in the room just a little bit ago, uh, and, uh, and that's what we were talking about. So, today is also a special day. We commemorate and celebrate the seventh anniversary of the Partnership Sunday between Episcopalianist Presbytery and the Presbyterian Church of Gitarama Presbytery in Rwanda. The theme today is from the Holy Scripture that guides this special day found in Matthew 11:28. Come all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads and I will give you rest. With reference to this theme, the president of the Gitarama Presbytery, Reverend Abertine Narzanedza, will deliver a sermon and I hope everyone will enjoy it. In this service, Gitarama Presbytery and Kiskamenidas Presbytery will use the same liturgical text, the same scriptures we'll, we, we will use, and will make an effort to use similar hymns in different languages and cultures. Now, you may notice some wording that is slightly unusual to us. I have intentionally left things in, like the prayer of confession, exactly as written in Rwanda. Also, this service is special because some of us are worshiping from home, others online in prevention of COVID-19. Therefore, this Partnership Sunday will look like no previous Sunday of partnership. I don't know that that's ever been done in, uh, in this church, this celebrated this, this partnership, uh, but it has existed for the last seven years 
So this has been something that uh, has been done before in this presbytery and the presbytery in Rwanda. Let's move on now to our call to worship. The grace of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you. It is a great privilege to both Kiskamenikus and Gitarama Presbytery. As we worship, we call your Holy Spirit to fill, strengthen, and guide us from the beginning until the end. Bless preachers on both sides, bless choirs, and each and every participant. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is number 227, To God Be the Glory. Dear God, we are in front of you. We do accept that we have sinned against you through our thoughts, speeches, sights, and even hearings. We have been selfish and did not take care of others as you expected us to do so. But we humbly confess our sins. In your mercy, forgive us all our sins and give us life in fullness. We pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. When we confess our sins and commit to eradicate them, God forgives us who have confessed. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ that you are forgiven. May the God of mercy who forgives all our sins strengthen you in all goodness, and may the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in the eternal life. Amen. shepherd I shall not want. He restoreth my soul. 
He guideth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Umana ni naziza and ni naziza chi ane. I just wanted to say that twice because I've been saying it over and over again. It means God is so good, so good to me. And in our effort in this shared partnership service with Rwanda, the, the Gitarama Presbytery, uh, we will listen to that song. Uh, from them, and then we will sing the English version, God is so good, he's so good to me.
for your love and faithfulness. At this time, we are going to listen to your word. Bless the preacher and fill the congregation with your Holy Spirit, who will help us to understand what you teach us through your holy word. Let your presence govern everything in this time. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our New Testament reading is from Philippians 2, verses 1 through 4. You'll find it printed on your bulletin insert. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one in mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. A gospel lesson as mentioned before, is from Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now I'm going to, uh, we have a, a video of Reverend Aberdeen delivering today's sermon. Uh, uh, since this is a partnership with, with the Gitarama Presbyterian Rwanda. And this was their year to do the, the, uh, the lectionary and... Uh, Al, are you going to give them the story about your friend? I will, Karen. Yes. Just fine. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Give her an inch, I'm telling her. I'm just kidding. She knows, <laughs> she knows I need all the help I can get. I'll start, uh, listen, I'm going to start this video for you, and I'm going, then I'm going to pause it, and we'll talk for uh, a minute before we go ahead or do Al, whatever. before you start, put the flowers down. Ah. Oh, we over here can't see through the post. Oh, no. Thank you very much. Oh, no. I'll put, I'll put them over here behind this one. Okay. Room. There we go. Now I can see. Is that better? That's much better. Okay. We'll get this figured out. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay, this is, uh, well, she'll introduce herself. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, I greet you. I thank God for this opportunity given to me to share with you the word of God. First of all, let me introduce myself to you. My name is Gabata Nyanesa. I'm the president of the Tarama Presbytery of the Presbyterian Church in Iwana. Thank you. Let me 
and they have more in your heart, and they will find the rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Okay, I thought I'd pause there uh, to give you a choice, number one. Uh, we have the entire sermon. It's pretty hard to understand. Uh, uh, you, you've got kind of a sample of that. Uh, so we can go ahead and do that. But fortunately, she did supply us with uh, the text, which I can read. Uh, and uh, it will be the, the same sermon, uh, hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully, easier to understand. Uh, does that make sense to you? I mean, yes. uh, the, that's, it's, a, it's a wonderful message uh, of, 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 uh, that she has delivered. And I really would like you to hear what she has to say and understand. Uh, before we get started then uh, reading on with the sermon, I want to tell you a personal story. I have a friend that lives in Kenya, next door to Rwanda. He has family in Rwanda. He grew up actually in the uh, Republic of Congo. His name is, uh, well, he goes by Ngarura, N-G-A-R-U-R-A, -A, Ngarura. Uh, I've been friends with him for several years. Uh, and and uh, we are uh, indeed brothers in Christ. He's uh, he's become a very important part of my life, and uh, and I I hope uh, that is returned uh, there. Well, when when I started preparing uh, for this partnership with Rwanda, the Rwanda Gidrama Presbytery. I thought about him, I'm talking to him uh, last week one day, and I, and I said, Ngarura, are you familiar at all with the Gidrama Presbytery? Because I knew that his father is an elder in a church in Rwanda, a Presbyterian church. Uh, so I asked him that. He responds in amazement. This is one of those stories that that. The, those moments that give you chills out of out of billions of people on this earth that I might have made friends. This was through through my seminary experience that I made friends with this man, uh, and uh, he said with amazement, "How do you know of the Gitarama Presbytery the, of this parish?" He said, "They, they call them parishes." And I told him, we are partners, our sister churches in uh, Rwanda are in the Gitarama Presbytery. And, he's, and he said, uh, the Gitarama Parish gave me the scholarship that allowed me to go to school. And he uh, He's now a uh, works in the uh, computer, the computer uh, department. He's uh, in in the cyber area, in a hospital in uh, Kenya. So, uh, and in addition, he said, and before my mother's death, she sang in that church, and it just. Glory be to God, uh, the, the, I found it so incredibly unlikely to have a friendship with someone uh, that was so closely tied to the, us through our sister churches. So I wanted to share that with you because it, it, uh, it moves me deeply. Now let's continue with Reverend Aberdeen's Sermon for Partnership Sunday. I'll start from the very beginning since we didn't go very far. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, 
I greet you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank God for this opportunity given to me to share with you the Word of God. Let me invite you to read from the Gospel according to Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In this passage, the Lord Jesus was addressing the people of Israel who were burdened and weighed down with their struggles for legal justification through performance of law and good works. Those who were under the oppression of religious traditions. At that time, the religious leaders exhibited extraordinary pride love for places of honor, special titles, and the exercise of authority over others. She notes to see Matthew 23, verses 5 through 12. I will read Matthew 23, 5 through 7. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries wide and their tassels on the garments long. They love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. Jesus, on the other hand, wanted to challenge them by his humility and gentleness. Jesus' invitation expresses the desire and compassionate heart of the Savior who calls all people to come to him as a relief from their oppression. It is a call to turn to him from whatever they are presently depending on. He tells them that by coming to him, they will be free from these burdensome rites and ceremonies, and he will give them rest. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the good news for all of us is that our Savior is extending the same call to us today. He is inviting us to take our problems to Him and to live a better life. This COVID-19 pandemic has put a burden on all of us, and the longer it goes, the heavier the burden seems to be. Many people are experiencing financial crises, hunger, job loss, unemployment, drug abuse, depression, stress, family breakdowns, domestic violence, feelings of inadequacy, and other conditions that tell people they don't measure up. Jesus' invitation is to those who recognize that they are tired and burdened, those who recognize their spiritual poverty and realize that they need grace and mercy. The poor and needy, the weary and heavy laden, the soul sick of sin and, and of world, the sinner conscious of guilt and afraid to die, may come to Jesus and live. The Lord Jesus is willing to save us and take our spiritual and physical burdens and set us free. Clear proof has been furnished that Jesus can save us. If he could open the eyes of the blind, then he can enlighten the sinners. If he could stop the ears of the deaf, then he can cause us to hear and live. If he could heal the sick and make the lame walk, then he can heal our spiritual maladies and make us walk in the way of life. If he could raise the dead, then he can raise those dead in sin and breathe into them the breath of eternal life. If he was willing to do all this for the body which is soon to perish, then he will be much more willing to do it for the soul that never dies. He makes a great promise to those who accept him as their personal savior who recognize their spiritual poverty 
that they will find the rest for their souls. One finds peace in realizing that this, his sins are forgiven by the grace of God. He finds peace of mind when understanding that God has loved him and delivered him from sins through the cross of Christ. In Christ, we are not under the curse of the law, that is having to keep the law perfectly in, a, in an effort to, of one to save himself. The only Savior is our Lord Jesus Christ. What does it mean to take Christ's yoke? A yoke is used in the context of oxen and other animals that are joined together to plow or pull a load. The yoke requires the animal to bend its neck to have the yoke put on either a single yoke for one animal or a double to bring two together. A yoke means that the animal cannot roam freely. It enables the oxen to yield to the handler. The yoke is used in the Bible as an emblem of bondage or slavery in, Revel in, in Leviticus, of commandment of God and of legal ceremonies in Acts 15.10 and Galatians 5.1. To take Christ's yoke means to submit to his person as the one who is gentle and meek, caring and connected for us. It means to put ourselves under his leading, to join ourselves together with him. But the difference is he is not a master. He is a yoke mate. He wants us to share the work with him because he is gentle and humble. We work and serve in the strength which he gives. He is always there beside us, pulling the weight for us. If we will only yield our lives to him, to work for him and with him, the only time the load becomes overbearing is when we try to take over and do the pooling or handle the load ourselves. When we seek to get rid of the burden by trying harder, as a result, we become tired and weary. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, in coming to Him, learning from Him, and following His leading, we will find peace that our souls need. Because in him there is peace which passes all understanding. In believing in him there is joy. In following him there is comfort which the world gives not. And in keeping his commandments there is a great reward. When one is motivated by grace and love, the commandment of God is not a burden. What a powerful promise in these times when we are feeling so weary. Our Savior is ready to take our burden and our problems, no matter how big or heavy they are. He wants us to be free from the bondage of our sins, from the confusion and from our struggles, for He came that we may have life in its fullness. Let us pray. Inviting God, you ask us to come to you and to take your yoke. But when you seek to slip the yoke around our necks to join you well, we resist. We back off. We refuse to truly listen and submit to your word and acknowledge your authority. We really refuse to trust in your gentleness and goodness. Help us, God, to trust you for that and to take your offer to be yoked with you and to learn from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.